Come on, cheer up. What's my line? One more time. <laughs> that is the home of the actual Pukumachubo. The actual Pukumachimi. The actual Pukumapibi. and I'll help you up. Throw it. Yes, yes. Hard. Cut. <laughs> I feel like if I go with the shape of it and wiggle it. Oh, no, 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 This way, it's gotta be this way. That's the one. Oh. oh my gosh. I do not share. <laughs> Bugger. Sorry. Oh, that is way too heavy. Thank you. Sorry. I've got oh. trouble for this. Sorry. Oh, oh damn. She popped. Oh. Sorry. 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 Sorry, Diz. Sorry. I was it's great. Oh, I was great. I can't feel my lower limbs. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to bite down on my stick? <laughs> Francisco warned you not to come to my jungle, and here you are. <laughs> 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 Jungle Cruise is about adventure. You are being transported and you are going on truly the ride of a lifetime. Ah, up. Whatever these characters come across, you are just encompassed in a different world visually. So it's ever changing as they're taken down the river. The experience is ever shifting. The myth is real. We build on the mythology and created characters and situations that put the audience in that right. Break the break. You really want to have a lot of emotion and heart in your films, but you also want to have big, memorable set pieces and create those thrills and really transport the audience. <laughs> Frank is a skipper on the Amazon, and he takes a lot of pride in what he does. I built a boat, and I named her after the goddess of the boat, Kila. Because that boat had been built by Frank, it was part of the character of Frank as almost like an extension. She's like his love. She's all he has. She's the only friend he has. So you feel that. You want the boat to feel like an old friend. Look what they did to you. Poor thing. Uh, it's his baby. Please don't. I insist, Lady, Frank. you know what I insist? I insist you leave me alone. Put that back in the bucket and go sit down. That's a kind of lovable, you know, old tramp steamer kind of thing, which Frank kind of is in many ways. This is my engine. Nobody touches my engine but me. For me, it was very important to kind of preserve the silhouette a little bit of what the boats in the right were. It's like almost like a Frankenstein of the boat, because if Frank is immortal and he spent his time to adjust, rebuild, so this boat is made of like 25 moments of construction. It was one of the things we were most excited about making in this, and I'm so thrilled with how she came out, the colors, the texture, the ruggedness. 
I think Jan Vincent did a phenomenal job at designing it. They're just bringing all the little details that made, like killing the way that I envisioned it, something both beautiful and practical. She weighs nearly 30,000 pounds with these electric engines from Germany that have BMW motors in them. We could get the boat up to seven knots. How nice of you to join us. Why don't you jump in the water? I don't want to talk about it. She can't swim. You booked a river cruise and you can't swim? I mean, the movie, obviously, is called Jungle Cruise. So people get on a boat and they go up the river. These days, you can have the water be digital, but we had a lot of water interaction. We had a lot of people going into the water, out of the water. Even when Frank is dangling from the side, his feet are on the water. So we needed to have the boat in the water. Jama explained he wanted a large portion of the movie to be filmed on a tank in front of a blue screen in outdoor light. We were on it for a heck of a long time on this water tank in Atlanta, and it really felt very real. Butter churn, how literal a metaphor. If you have anything of value, I would recommend you store it below deck. Here we go. <laughs> This tank's a round tank because they wanted current, and so we put this island in the middle so the current could go round and round. Jama needed the boat to be able to move, to spin, to rock back and forth, to gimbal around. So that was the first thing we set out to design on this film, was the tank and the gimbal for the boat. JD designed a boat that could move up and down this tank. It could tilt and turn and give the illusion that we were moving with the fans and everything. We get a terrible motion sickness. It's a genuine problem, but I think I've navigated a, a route through it. You're looking a little green around the gills. <laughs> I didn't throw up on the rock, not once. just exteriors, no interiors, but you can really walk around this place and feel like you're in a real place. Buongiorno, signorina. So we could really get the light from the actual world and the interaction and people could enter and exit through doors. Everything tells some story because I'm really between the 18th and the 19th century everywhere because I'm supposed to be 1917. So I like to root all the, the construction with proportion, doors, I'm using gardens everywhere. I'm putting steps everywhere. It really feels like something that should be placed in the middle of Disneyland or Disney World. It's true world creation on the highest level. When we came back here to Atlanta, we had to look at what we had. We had stages and we had a forest across the street, which we were able to jungle-fy in a very convincing way and make in flowers and all the plant life that you'd see in the Amazon. Frank, would you like to bite down on my stick. Uh, no, well, I'm fine. There if you need it. So many of the scenes were practical sets. There was the tree village, which was like mind blowing. 
And it's amazing as an actor because you're there and you're experiencing it and you feel like you're in that world. Lily. <laughs> <laughs> The Tree Village, it's like something very, very classical. It was a little bit complex to find the structure of the jungle, make trees, vines, and plants, like the density of information and the fact that I had many layers of material, a mixture of polystyrene, resin, silicone, real branch, fake silk plants and real plants. We rigged the Tree Village set with a really intricate water dripping system throughout the whole place to kind of give it that element that the tree's alive and in a rainforest. This movie has a lot of visual effects. For the jungle aspect, we started the movie thinking that we would go to the Amazon, we would shoot some plates, and then we would just composite the blue screen. But it became obvious that it would take months to go get, because all these amazing places in the Amazon are really far away from each other. So we decided to go full CG on the Amazon, and that really freed us. So we'd create this lush environment in the computer, and I was just blown away with what these artists with their tools today could do with plant life and water, and the eye for detail was just amazing. It's really all about the wildlife. You want a lot of mosquitoes and things that you might not even notice, but it makes it more lively and really just helps tell the story and sell that it is the Amazon, even though it's not. In terms of Proxima, I think what they did was incredible. That was Weta. They've done incredible creature design. They spend a lot of time analyzing real animals. The detail that they brought to Proxima, there's so many little tiny intricacies. It's the fur, it's the eyes. And then you start to figure out how it moves. Simple things like her walking. The first shots where you see her in this bar scene, she's just simply pacing into the room and looking around as a predator does. And it was about getting all those subtleties down. You want it to look visceral and real. You want to see all those muscles and you want it to come to life. Action. We had an on-set actor dressed in a cat suit you want my cross and I'm down. Yeah. to perform as the cat, and then that actor was erased and Proxima was put in its place. I also did all the creature movement on Disney's uh, Jungle Book, so that was a big help in learning an animal movement. He was basically an eye line for us, and it gave something for the actors to act to. <laughs> I'm going to be really honest with you. Up until today, I thought Jaguars were the black ones. So when Ben walked onto set this morning in that costume, I just thought that that was a fashion choice. To be fair, he just had the bottom half, he had the trousers. I thought leopard skin trousers, and I thought, hey, that's just a guy that likes to rock out with leopard skin trousers. This is his first day on set, it's a bold choice. And then I went, oh no, he's the man playing the Jaguar, because that's what Jaguars look like. I definitely did my research, watched a lot of videos. Hopefully I can bring the most realistic version of what a Jaguar would actually do. We wanted to create a cat that was scary, but also endearing at the same time people could relate to. And Weta just did a spectacular job. I believe that Proxim exists. I mean, I think that after you watch the movie, you believe that that cat really exists. You did good, Proxima. You're a good girl. In terms of the Conquistadors, we talked to ILM. They've done a lot of work in movies like Pirates, where they're able to create these fully CG characters. Gear is the catalyst of the whole story. He's one of the original conquistadors that goes into the Amazon and we need an actor that could transcend the technical aspect of the visual effect and still deliver an incredible performance. And that's what that girl was perfect. There's a curse that came upon the conquistadors and we became everything that we hated from the jungle. Creo que es la primera vez que se ven los conquistadores en el siglo XIX, donde ya tenemos un hechizo con la serpiente, con el barro, con las abejas, con las raíces. Por eso creo que es un momento muy épico de la película. Man.
original chore is this conquistador. The way he's cursed, being covered in mud and frogs, really doesn't match well with something who is worried about being clean or who's gonna spend like 400 years in the jungle surrounded by frogs and mud. Somos asquerosos. Habla por ti, eh? Yo estoy buenísimo. Sancho is made of bees and beeswax and honey, and he is amazing. The bees are always breaking down and building honeycomb on him, and he's just kind of oozing honey. Gonzalo is made of vines. We wanted him to move like time-lapse photography, like when plants kind of grow, because it's creepy. And I became the lord of the snakes because I killed the snake and I, I feared them, I hate them. So that's part of the curse. ILM developed a new technique to capture the performance. We had tracking markers on the face of the actors that were not visible unless they were under infrared light. So attached to the main camera, we had these other infrared cameras and infrared light that would then pick up these markers. That way we could use the actor's face themselves when needed. So the actors didn't have to wear the usual helmet cameras. So they could act normally within the scene. Action! And then the CG skin would have been put over them. Parece sorprendido. So that was really groundbreaking and it really freed us to shoot them and, and for the actors to perform. You have to use your imagination because most of the things that we have to do, we don't know how they're gonna look. When I move my hand and mud's gonna be dripping. So how would you move to give a lot of options to the FX guy afterwards to, to put mud on that movement? <laughs> When movies like this are done the right way, there's a quality that seeps into the DNA and it remains with you, it stays with you. You're just, you're taken away. <laughs> Did you like it? That was good. We had all the tools necessary to make everything feel authentic. The action pieces are so big and, you know, we had such a great visual effects team and production design team. And, and I think that makes the action very enjoyable for the whole family. Of all the jungle cruises you could take in the Amazon, this one is undoubtedly the cheapest. I have a lot of money. Where were we? <laughs> I was a big fan of Emily Blunt even before we had worked together. She is one of the most diverse, I think, and multi-threat talented actresses. She could sing, she could dance, she can go deep, she could go darker, she could go lighter. So she does everything. It was so special to have Emily come on and be my co-star. Welcome oh. to the adventure of a lifetime. As a partner, he was just wonderful for me. We hit it off immediately, and I think our relationship as the characters also somewhat mirrors our relationship. He's a man in love. No. <laughs> <laughs> they have an amazing chemistry. That is something that, as a director, you're blessed with, because every scene becomes an opportunity for something magical to happen. Emily Blunt has an incredible sense of mischief and fun, and that's what makes her so brilliant, I think, as well. She keeps every take that she does so energetic and vibrant. It's always full of life. <laughs> she can be the action hero. She can be vulnerable. She can be tough. She can be funny. And she brings all of those things to Lily. <laughs> Two beers, two steaks, uh, Mahaje uh, Peige, uh, Peigeon. Let me do it one more time. So, I, here, and I'm off to a good start. Dwayne, you know, what more can, can you want? He's wonderful. He really listens to the other actors, to the director. He's really present, and he's funny. I picked the wrong vine. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 
he's a wonderful action man, but also he has this vulnerability and this, this charm and this care. That is the home of the actual Puka Machibi. Sorry, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not it's my fault. Dwayne is so innately funny and so quick, and I think he's also not afraid of looking a bit silly. You like it? No, I don't. It's awful. <laughs> 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 I really felt his sort of commitment on an emotional level to this movie, which is just so wonderful to work with because then you know you're fighting to make something really special with someone every day. And I love how they're the antithesis of one another as characters, and in some ways, Dwayne and I are like the antithesis of one another. It's sort of a funny idea of us being a couple in this movie, but somehow it just works. I asked him, would it be okay if we come and use your gym? <laughs> And he was so nice about it, he was like, absolutely. And I spoke to the producers and they said, did he let you in the Iron Paradise? I said, yeah. And they said, oh, he, no one's ever, ever been allowed in there. So I was like, felt very special. After I picked them clean of meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, I'm gonna be looking at you for that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way you hit the T on hey. meat, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they were laughing the whole time. There were many, many, many times where we couldn't finish the scene because they were laughing in the middle of it. Shut up, Timothy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they have this amazing energy together. <laughs> it's loaded it up. All right, we're going to pretend you said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Question. Okay. Want me to say it again? No. 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 I got it. <laughs> John was like, no, no, you got it. <laughs> okay. And I'm just sat there, sort of witnessing this tennis match unfold. Just, just, don't do it. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson has become my most enormous buddy in the world. Well, let's see one hand on it. I think you're gonna need two. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly didn't know what to expect when I met him. I think I imagined that he would be larger than life, which physically clearly he is, but in personality too, and I was so taken by how gentle-souled he was, how wise he was, how ludicrously funny he was. Hi. <laughs> it was like kismet, I think, that we were to come together and make this movie. We became the greatest friends. This has been awesome. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.